Hello and welcome to another Tech Distractions video. In this one we'll be checking out a PCI-based sound card that doesn't usually get a lot of attention on the retro scene. It's based on a chip and a company that you may never have even heard of before. It's the FM801 from Forte Media. It made some interesting claims at the time and it might be useful for some retro builds that don't have legacy ISA expansion slots. This particular card is manufactured by Hong Kong based company AMAX and this one's called the SP801. It is a two channel sound card. AMAX also released four and six channel versions with 3D feature sets. Here's a similar one that was released at the same time by Atrend and is shown in the Australian PC Player magazine from around November 1999. According to the date stampings on my card, it looks like this one was made in the back half of 1999. The card itself isn't too interesting to look at, and it resembles many of the late 90s generic PCI sound cards of that era. What is of interest here though is the chip, the Forte Media FM801. Forte Media was founded in 1996, and according to its own press release, it had expertise with integrating ASIC hardware, signal processing, and system software, and was looking to shake up the low-cost audio market. They're still going today, but seem to be specialising more in the voice processing technology side rather than PC components. The FM801 was released during mid-1998, and was designed to be a low-cost entry into PCI sound cards. It had forward-looking feature set for Windows and compatibility with the AC97 standard. Forte Media were also keen to point out that their new chipset was backwards compatible with MS-DOS games and featured resource management comparable to legacy ISA sound cards on certain chipsets. This is quite a claim, but might be very useful in some scenarios where you have a cost-reduced motherboard with an ISA slot removed, or maybe you've only got one slot and it's occupied, but you still have support within your chipset, like something from the Socket 7 Base 430TX or Slot 1-Socket 370Base 440LX. But the claim that caught my attention was the Sound Blaster Pro and OPL3 FM support in real mode DOS. This is without needing to load any protected mode or M386 drivers for resource redirection, like other similar solutions at the time. This would be pretty cool if proven accurate, especially for older games that don't play nice with memory managers. So getting back to the card now, there's not a lot else on this thing. There's only the FM801 chip, a small AC97 codec, and that's about it. That's usually a bit of a concern. Such high levels of integration within these sound cards usually mean some sort of severe compromises. So how were Forte Media able to condense all this down to one single chipset? Well, the answer is host signal processing, or emulation. If you've heard of terms like soft modems, this would be a similar concept. Manufacturers only needed to put the bare minimum of interfacing logic chips onto these sound cards and relied on the host CPU and software to perform all the heavy lifting. Your standard run-of-the-mill AC97 integrated sound card like the one inside your motherboard today does very similar things, and it's not an issue for the large majority of us. CPUs are very powerful, and the host signal processing doesn't tax it too much. It appears Forte Media thought about this back in 1998 and wanted to use their in-house knowledge of integration to bring this to the mass market. They also seem to think that CPUs were powerful enough to be able to handle this. The chip on my card is labelled the FM801-AS, which is an early version of the chipset stamped with a date in the last week of 1998. According to the product brief, Forte Media targeted this solution at the low-end budget conscious desktop and laptop market. It had support for PCI bus mastering, PC-PCI support or SB-Link, but not on my card unfortunately, real mode DOS Sound Blaster Pro support, AdLib compatibility, SPDIF output for digital audio, and AC97 support for Windows. The AS variant of the chip was discontinued shortly after release and replaced with the AU variant, which included SBDIF inputs and supported additional codecs for digital output including AC3. This would have been really useful for the home theatre PC market. I've seen at least one other variant of this chip, including one found on Vogons, which has got the FM801-A1. I'm unsure of the exact differences at the chip level, but I'm assuming it's the lack of the SBDIF header and the PC-PCI pads, which means it was just a minor change. For this project, I'm using a Gigabyte PCV2-DSI motherboard that contains a 1GHz C3 base CPU from Fire. I've previously used this board with something like the ESS Solo 1 and was really happy with the performance, so I was keen to see how the 4 day Media chip stacked up. I'll be using MS-DOS for the testing and will only load the XMS driver HiMem.sys. If you only plan to use MS-DOS like me, you can use the DOS installer package. This comes with the standard driver pack. I've put the link to the Vogons driver location in the description below. Using the very basic install program, you just set the default settings and initialize the dosgame.cfg file. It also puts CFG801 and DOS801.exe into the autoexec.bat. This should start up whenever your PC does. These will enable a sound card for use in MS-DOS, and if you don't specify any options with the CFG801, it'll use whatever is stored in the dosgame.cfg file. There are a few modes you can use with the FM801 config program. You can use dash zero to use a scanning technique to figure out what setting to use. You can use dash one to force legacy mode one, which seems suitable for earlier Intel chipsets like the 430FX, the 430HX, and the 430VX. Legacy mode one also has support for the via Apollo and Apollo Plus, and an unspecified ALI chipset, which would have been from the Socket 7 days as well. 
the Dash 2 switch puts into the legacy mode too, and it seems to be for just about everything else. It'll detect things like the 440LX or certain early SIS chipsets and set them automatically to legacy mode too. Otherwise, you'll just get an error that says PCI chipset not found, but it will put it to legacy too anyway. Setting Dash 3 seems to be distributed DMA or DDMA setting, and this seems to be for chipsets like the Intel 430TX, 440BX, and 450GX chipsets. These will automatically be set to DDMA mode. I couldn't see any evidence of a transparent DMA mode or TDMA mode like we get with the ESS Solo 1. Dash 4 seems to specify PC PCI, and these are for cards and boards with the 6 pin SB link connector. Unfortunately, my card doesn't have this, and neither does my motherboard. Finally, the DOS 801.exe seems to just be a simple TSR that does some sort of redirection. There are some reports that this isn't even required on some configurations. However, on all my tests, I needed to use it, or else I couldn't get digitized effects to work. Unfortunately, here we've got some mixing controls that are missing. This means we can't change the volume in MS DOS. It feels like a bit of an oversight, but fortunately, the SB mix utility from BTTR software seems to do the trick just fine. So now it's time to check out some MS-DOS games.
So a bit of a mixed bag here. Most games sounded like they were supposed to, or close enough. I'm not really a perfectionist when it comes to audio, and as long as it gets the job done, I'm usually okay with it. This being said, the sampling on Wolf 3D was very unpleasant, and this leads me to wonder if there's other games like this that might exhibit the same sort of problem. There is the odd hanging note on Prince of Persia, but this didn't really bother me so much. But for others, I understand this might be a deal breaker. While experimenting with this card, I tested Legacy Mode 2 on the 440LX chipset and DDMA on the 440BX. I didn't spot any difference with the sampling on Wolf 3D or any improvement or change to the compatibility as opposed to the chipset that I was using originally. Now as far as Windows is concerned, I'm not going into too much detail here. The focus on the video was DOS and real mode usage of the chipset. If you're planning to use this card primarily for Windows, then there are many better alternatives. The Forte Media FM801 has got some good features and performs reasonably well in MS-DOS. Did you have one of these cards back in the day? Or did maybe you have one of these in a retro build today? I'm curious to see if anyone else there has got experience with this card. It's definitely not a perfect PCI sound card for MS-DOS, but it's one of the better ones I've had a chance to play around with, and it appears to be a useful addition to my retro hardware library. I really like being able to run older games in real mode without worrying about M386 or anything like that. Being able to use a single IRQ is a neat feature too when it's configured properly. Anyway, that wraps up this look at the FM801. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I look forward to catching you in the next one. Bye for now.